when we prepare for interviews. As you know, um, just like any other journalist, we, they ask us for questions and we never give them the questions, we just give them the topics, which I think is very important. So when, when you prepare for interviews like this, um, I'm of the school of thought that the questions are important, but the answers are even more important. Because if you ask tough questions and you don't get an answer, what have you accomplished other than the fact that you're showing people that you're a tough interviewer? I think you need to get the answer for the, to, in order to really serve your community and your viewers or your readers or, or your listeners, uh, you need to get answers. Whatever it takes to get answers, but you need to get the answer. So to me, the question's important, and I, and, and I always think of the questions that people want to know. You know, I'm here on their behalf, on, on the viewer's behalf. Um, I'm representing them, and I need to, uh, to ask the questions that they mm. want asked. But as we all know, politicians will answer whatever they want to answer. Uh, so most of their answers are predictable. So when I prepare, I always think, when I prepare a question, I always think of the answer. And to me, the most important is the follow-up, not the question itself. Or to pose the question in a way where I already know what you're going to tell me. So tell me what I don't know. Tell me something I don't know. Tell me something behind this. I think you always have to be prepared to, to listen to the answers and, 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 and do follow-ups and not let them get away with saying whatever they want to say. Mm. You know, I think that that's important. But at the same time, um, you know, you don't want a, an interview to become an interrogation or an interview to become a debate between you and the person you're interviewing. So I think the flow of information is important, especially when it's a world leader. You know, world leaders are usually not in touch with what's happening with the people that affect their decisions. And you need to bring it home to them. You need, you need to bring them to that, to that level. And you have to understand that they're doing their job and you're doing your job. And at the moment that you're doing that interview, you know, you, you respect their position, but they need to respect your position too. Mm -hmm. um, so the level changes, I think. Um, there is that respect, but you are in an equal level at that time. Uh, you need to respect the position and the job that they have, but they need to respect your position too. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's happened many times. I, I don't know that I can mention any specific one, but I've had an opportunity to interview many, many world leaders in the U.S., every president since Jimmy Carter, in, in Latin America, especially in the 80s and the 90s, we interviewed several uh, leaders. Um, recently, I did a special on the children at the border crisis, and I went to Central America. I went to El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras, and, and the border. And we did, um, we wanted to show the conditions that these kids le leave, live in and what makes them want to leave their country in search of a better life. It's not necessarily so that they want to come here and reunite with their families or are here undocumented and they're bringing their kids over. In some cases, these people are running away from poverty, from gang violence, from violence generated by the uh, drug wars. So I did have an opportunity to interview not only people on in, in different communities, poor communities. Um, I, I interviewed gang members and I interviewed um, um, human traffickers, but I interviewed two of the presidents there. And yeah, I took the pictures, I took the video, and I went to show them. And I did press them on the fact that they, these are the conditions that these people live in. And they seem to blame the U.S. Uh, for the drug consumption. They all blame the U.S. Well, there's drug consumption in the U.S., so the U.S., is, it, it's their fault and their responsibility to take care of us because we wouldn't have this drug violence in our country if it wasn't because they're a consumer country. Well, you know, you have a responsibility to your own people. If, you're, if your people are living in poverty and they feel that they need to leave, if there's no safety, the safety in this country is not the responsibility of the U.S., it's the responsibility of this government. People need to feel safe. People need to feel like they have opportunities, that they have that they can attain the education and, and opportunities to get ahead in life that they shouldn't have to leave. And I think when you do those types of interviews, um, it, that, they're the questions important, but the answer's important too, here again. So that's happened to me in the most recent uh, mm -hmm. case was the case of, of, of these Central American presidents and, and also the presidents of, of Mexico. I remember interviewing um, uh, President Calderon at one point where uh, again, was um, he was advocating for the rights of Mexicans in the U.S., and I asked him um, if he had the moral authority to ask the U.S. to 
treat his compa compatriots in a compassionate way when Mexico does not treat immigrants from uh, other countries, especially Central America, in a compassionate way. So, you know, he believes he does have the moral uh, authority to do so, um, but at the time I didn't. So, you know, I think, I think you need to be able to ask those types of questions, but again, um, at least in my style, I always try to, to do it in a, in, in a very respectful manner. Uh, asking the tough questions in a respectful manner because I need answers. And, and the most important thing is having the follow-up question.